This is the third part in our three-part video series of uh, importing an existing inventory into iTree Streets. Um, in the first part, we formatted our data using Microsoft Excel. In the second part, we imported that Excel data into a Microsoft Access database, which is what Streets requires uh, you to do so you can import that data. So in this uh, part, we're ready to create our Streets project and finally import the data. So here's our access database. So let's go ahead and we can open uh, iTree Streets and get the process started. So once you have iTree Streets open, we're going to go ahead and go to the file menu and open and we're going to make a new project here. And the first thing you have to do is create this database and we're going to go ahead again and we're going to create a new one. This is essentially our streets project so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, call this my city um, inventory and go ahead and save that we have to give this uh, project name so again I'm just gonna stick with this my city, our inventory type. So this has to match what you actually did in the field. Did you do a complete inventory of all the street trees or is it just a sample? In this case, uh, it's a complete inventory. If it was just a sample, we would have to have street segment numbers. And our climate region here, so we could view this map again. But if you remember when we set up this project, we used the species codes from the Midwest. Uh, when we were getting our species codes together. So that's what we need to go ahead and select now for our climate region. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Midwest and hit finish. And once you do that, then you get to these other, uh, and you just have to walk through these steps. This would be the same if you were creating a new project from scratch. So our nation here, we can go down to the use and we'll be in the United States. Uh, our state in this case was uh, actually Wisconsin. Uh, so this data is actually from a, a small city in Wisconsin that's in Waukesha County. And uh, for this purpose, um, the exact city isn't really all that important, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one. But you would wanna pick your, your city here um, if you knew these other values and you wanted to do some of that cost-benefit analysis, you could fill all these in. Uh, but since we're just showing the import steps here, we'll just go ahead and uh, leave these as the default zero values. Same things with these defined costs. If you know them and you want to look at that cost-benefit, fill them in. Again, I'm just going to uh, breeze through here so we can get to the actual import. Same thing with the benefit prices. And you can always come back to these if you want to change them once you've created your project as well. This stage here though, this user defined fields, we need to, to take a second to look at what's offered here since we want to make sure that this matches up with what we're actually going to import. So in our case, that data that I'm going to import uh, looks like this, it just has these five columns. Um, so that's all we want to have in these user defined fields. So I don't have anything about public or private trees in my data. I didn't import any maintenance info. If you look at the uh, example that's in the archives uh, on our website, you will see that there is some of that, so you could import that. Same thing with land use, I didn't bring that in. Uh, didn't bring in anything about sidewalk. Um, I did bring in condition, so I'm gonna leave that condition checked. Uh, I didn't bring in site type, and I didn't bring in wire conflicts. So you would go ahead and you would check whichever one of these you wanted to bring in. So if I wanted to bring in street names and numbers, I would make sure those were checked. And again, all of these match up with what's in the manual in this table on page 25. So you would just need to make sure that you had everything correctly formatted. In my case, just for the point of this example, I didn't go through uh, a whole bunch of those different variables just because I didn't want to make a video that was real long. So let's go through these and you'll see that, you know, our first three variables are up top here. So DBH, you want to click on the DBH tab and you have to make a couple decisions here. When we enter this data, do we record it by DBH classes or do we record actual measurement? In our case, we have actual measurements, so you want to go ahead and click uh, select measurement there. 
and these measurements were measured in inches so you have to know how this looks uh, on your actual inventory um, so we could create our four zones here I'm just gonna go ahead and add four and our zones were just named northeast southeast southwest northwest you just want to make sure these are named exactly like we have them over here uh, same thing with condition uh, so these condition factors we could change them if we didn't use good fair poor and dead or dying if we did these in a different order I could go ahead and change all these and this is where having your metadata over here comes in really handy so if you did things in a different way you could change how exactly it's import importing there um, and what each one of these codes your code numbers one through four what exactly they correspond to but in our case one was dead or dying two was poor three was fair and four was good so that's all fine we can just leave it as it is but if you had different categories you would want to go ahead and change those so that's it then you hit OK once you've described all your fields of the data you're going to import and now essentially you have an empty project so we want to go ahead and fill this up with our data and this step here all we need to do is go back to the file menu select import inventory data and we're going to import a database file so we need to browse to where that is and here's mine and this is that access database we created that .mdb file and I'm just going to hit open oh, it tells me it's in use so I have to make sure that I close it over here so I'm just going to hit open and OK and here it tells me I've got 1,872 records successfully imported. And we can hit OK. And it tells me I have some unmatched species codes. So you may remember back in part one, there were a couple species codes that I didn't convert over, and that's what this is telling me here. And it's going to go ahead and open up a dialog where I can decide what I want these species codes to be. And it's telling me here these are all the ones that actually came in OK. So I'm just going to scroll down, and here where we have a red exclamation point, we need to make sure that species matches up with something. So it came in, I didn't change the species code, it was just butternut. So we need to match this up with a, a species code that Streets is going to recognize. So it wants us to give it an assigned species value. So we can go ahead and see, uh, in this common name, we can see if there's a butternut in here. So in our case, since uh, in the Midwest it doesn't look like we have a butternut species to use um, we could go ahead and see uh, so in our case we have to give this butternut uh, common name a scientific name and we have to tell what species it's most similar to for eye tree streets so the first thing I would actually do would be to look at that list of species for the Midwest and see if maybe butternut is in there um, I know that it's not actually in there so we can assign it to another existing species but in our case let's go ahead and enter in a common name for this tree and we'll just call it butternut and we can also enter in a scientific name this is just a you know maybe this is a species of special interest so we want to make sure we keep track of it so we can go ahead and enter in the scientific name but then we have to assign it to a species value here so we have to tell it which species code we want it to use and we can only select trees from this list down here. This is just the list of uh, available trees. And you could go ahead and see, you know, if you think that butternut's similar to something like a uh, black walnut, it'd be worth checking to see what species black walnut is assigned to, and then you can use the same thing for your butternut. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we are back at our species list uh, Excel file. And I'm just going to scroll down here to see what black walnut is. And it looks like black walnut, the species it's assigned to. And the species value assignment is FRPE, so that's Fraxinus uh, pennsylvanica, uh, or green ash. So we could go ahead and use that same species assignment over here. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll just call this green ash and so that's 
uh, the species assignment and that's just because butternut is not in the database it has so we have to assign it to something else uh, so that's okay for butternut and you can see our red exclamation point goes away so you would just want to scroll down to this table and go through anything that has a red exclamation point we had some blanks in there and the easiest thing to do here is just to check this non-tree category uh, so there's other things that you could have in there if you kept track of planting sites uh, those aren't going to have a species code. You're not going to want to evaluate those uh, within streets. So you would do the same thing. You would just check that non-tree box. And you'll see there again our red exclamation point goes away. And you're just going to go through all your species and do this uh, for everything you have that's unmatched. And you're going to have to make some decisions again. That's basically judgment call. But once you're all done that, you can hit OK. And if you want to look at your data, we go ahead and go to the input menu and select records and we look here and we can see that it looks like all our data came in uh, until we save all our numbers here are going to have negatives that's fine once we save all the tree IDs will go back you can see it looks like our zones came in correctly um, all our species codes if there's anything still kind of out of order here we would have uh, red exclamation points to deal with um, Looks like our condition codes all came in fine. Um, everything says is in there. Our DBH values are in. And everything else says not entered because we didn't import that data. Um, so that's it. We've gotten all of our 1,872 records in. And that's how the process normally goes. And I can go ahead and make sure we save our project now. And it's going to take a little while this first time it saves those 1,800. But at this point, you could go ahead and you could look at reports and everything and your existing inventory you've grabbed it you've pulled it in and you're uh, estimating benefits and you can go you can edit that data using that um, menu I just showed uh, you can look at uh, your reports if you want to pull up these relative uh, age distributions for different species uh, across your whole city you can look at all these sorts of things and uh, all that data is in there and ready to be analyzed so that's the way uh, to import an existing inventory into streets. It's uh, those three basic steps, format your data in Excel, get it into an access database, and finally create an empty streets project and import your access database uh, into it.